we can have before we reach a quorum. Uh, just for the record, uh, I see me, Linda Sibley, Christina Brown, Fred Hancock, Brian Smith, Tripp Barnes, Peter Wharton, and Ben Robinson, who will be participating tonight. Uh, and this is, as I said, land use planning. We have two items on the agenda. They are both subdivisions. Uh, they are both pre-public hearing reviews. Uh, first is DRI 740, Northern Pines Farm Subdivision, which is a uh, proposal to subdivide 42 acres into eight residential dwelling lots and one approximately 16 acre agricultural lot. The second is DRI 741, the Cirque Meadow Subdivision. Uh, Doug Hone is the agent for that one. This is a Form C subdivision of a little over 17 acres into five buildable lots and two uh, open space lots, uh, which are about a total of 10 acres. Our job is to review each project, assist the applicant in preparing for the public hearing, determine whether the project is ready for public hearing, and also uh, as part of our housekeeping, vote on whether or not to waive uh, an independent traffic study. Uh, so let's start with Northern Pines. Uh, Glenn Provost is the agent, uh, once again, showing us that the semi of semi-retirement seems to be dominant. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, Rich, why don't you tell us what it is? You got it, Mr. Chairman, stay tuned. Okay, folks, this is DRI 740, Northern Pines Farm. Uh, the, uh, the owner is Paradise, uh, Paradise Land Trust. The applicant is Paradise Land Trust via Janet and John Packer, trustees. Um, the location is uh, 60 Cuffees Point in Tisbury. Uh, the proposal is a subdivision, a subdivision of land into eight building lots and an agricultural parcel for estate purposes. It's in the R3A zoning district of Tisbury uh, with a minimum of three acre zoning. Um, and uh, the only uh, permitting element to it, uh, it would be a chapter, uh, a chapter 61A uh, restriction that's on the property, and that um, may actually play into a planning concern for affordable housing. In that, um, uh, if uh, any of the uh, family were to sell a lot or transfer a lot, um, to the best of my understanding, under the uh, under Chapter sixty one A, uh, the town of Tisbury would have the first right of refusal. Um, I will make a greater note of that uh, at the end of this presentation. Uh, the project summary is uh, under subdivision control law to create eight 3.1 acre building lots and one 16.22 acre agricultural parcel. Uh, it's checklist 2.3 on the um, DRI checklist, mandatory referral. And the referring agency is the Tisbury Planning Board. Uh, this is the parcel adjacent to um, uh, Lake Tashmu, or not immediately adjacent, but near enough. And uh, now I understand what you were uh, saying, Linda. I'm sorry, I don't have a zoom out, um, but uh, hopefully you folks uh, uh, get a general idea of where that is in the town of Tisbury. This is... Um, the uh, proposed division itself, oops, excuse me. Uh, you can see here, um, sorry that it's cut off a little bit there. The uh, agricultural parcel uh, goes up through here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight building lots. And there's a bit of a, um, a livestock corridor, uh, sort of a, a continuation of the ag parcel this way, which also helps touch some of the lots. Uh, 
Uh, this is a, a view of the um, some of the land that would be uh, in the ag agricultural parcel and also some of the land that would be in a lot. Uh, it's an active farm now over there. You can see a little uh, livestock enclosure. Um, obviously, you can see the fencing that denotes um, efforts to keep livestock in. Uh, this is a, um, a large solar array that's on a property. Um, it's also um, used as a uh, sort of a, a, a lean-to shed, I mean, a sort of a, a shed. Um, it's supported on pilings. The applicant knows a thing or two about pilings. Uh, this is a, another view of um, uh, the subdivision site. Um, and this um, is sort of, this may not exactly track where they want to put it, but this is some somewhat of an idea of um, a little livestock corridor that the applicant was hoping for in that tail I showed you. And there's a little camp right there. Uh, this is uh, a, a roadway on the uh, proposed subdivision parcel. Um, it's adjacent to the uh, solar array. Uh, these are highland sheep that they raise on the property and these are um, uh, sort of uh, repurposed um, livestock enclosures for the sheep. Some baby sheep there, more baby sheep. Uh, here's some uh, poultry they keep on the property, chickens and um, I think geese. At least I think I'm pretty sure that's a goose. And this is the homestead on the property and uh, a barn on the property. And these are the planning concerns. Um, first, and broad bullet point, affordable housing, wastewater, uh, environment and habitat, and uh, traffic and transportation. Uh, for the uh, affordable housing component, um, it's uh, the the, uh, the family has said that they are dividing this land for estate planning purposes. Um, per view uh, from uh, our uh, subject matter expert on housing, uh, it would be uh, behoove uh, the applicants to provide something in writing that stipulates that it is going to be in a state plan and that um, if any of the parcels uh, were to transfer outside of the family, that some type of housing mitigation uh, be applied. However, as I pointed out earlier, this property is subject to chapter 61A, which does put a um, sort of a parallel restriction on it in that um, were the family to sell any one of these parcels outside of the family, uh, the town of Tisbury uh, would have first right of refusal, and there would also be uh, tax implications. They were rollback taxes they would have to pay to the town of Tisbury. So that's something to take uh, note of. As far as wastewater is concerned, um, a preliminary estimate uh, by staff uh, saw that they uh, they were in the Tashmu watershed, that um, they come in uh, with uh, numbers that are not impactful and a a very uh, recent uh, calculation by uh, Vineyard Land Surveying and Engineering came up with the same conclusion and they just submitted that to us. Uh, as far as uh, habitat and environment is concerned, um, the property does have some uh, exceptional open space, most of which is encompassed uh, in the um, agricultural parcel. Um, the, it appears as though they went out of their way to try to encompass as much as possible. <clears throat> um, and uh, these, uh, based on a Dukes County map, these do not appear to be uh, in any portion of the property prime agricultural soils. As far as traffic and tra transportation is concerned, um, <clears throat> the family has been in correspondence with uh, uh, the Tisbury Fire Department to ensure that uh, whatever they lay out as they've laid it out now or as they may adjust it uh, will allow a fire apparatus to enter the property safely uh, with the proper widths and be able to stage there mm -hmm. if need be. Um, uh, also, um, 
I return to, hold on just a second, folks. Um, the property uh, has a large um, Sheriff's Meadow Preserve um, on its uh, southwestern and um, northwestern side. And up here off the map where you can't see, uh, there's a there's a small uh, sh uh, um, land bank preserve uh, at the uh, um, on the on the shores of Lake, Lake Tashmu. And um, there has been a, a suggestion by staff that uh, it may be um, uh, worthwhile to consider a trail easement along the edge of the property. Uh, in order to uh, facilitate safe travel for people who may be traveling between the two preserves, uh, something uh, to consider. And uh, that's the long and short of it. I uh, hand it back to the chair. Hey, Doug, yeah. uh, Adam, I'm sorry. Um, did you, I, I did talk to Mike. I don't, if Mike is here, um, we feel like we don't need a traffic study for this. Okay. Um... Any comments by commissioners regarding the necessity of a traffic study? Otherwise, we'll just take a vote on that right now. Anyone care to move on that? I would move that we um, recommend that this does not need a traffic study or vote that this does not need a traffic study. That's a second. Okay. Any further comment on that? Okay. All commissioners in favor of that, kindly raise your hand. I'm afraid that Carol and Kathy have joined us, but since you are the ninth and 10th uh, attendees, you can't participate, but you sure can watch. Uh, so all in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I've counted to eight, so that means we have waived, we voted to waive the traffic study. Okay. Glenn, is there anything you would like to add before commissioners uh, ask some questions? Uh, just briefly, um, I know uh, John and Janet are on the meeting. Uh, they live on the property and have lived there for many years. So I think they have a very personal, direct connection to the, to the land. So I've been working with them for a couple of years now, trying to come up with an estate plan that satisfies the needs of the family going forward uh, as it relates to their farming practice and trying to come up with lots that uh, would be eventually in their children's names, which is uh, why we put made the lots the way we did. They actually picked some sites and we tried to create parcels around them. But uh, I think uh, Rich has pretty much covered it. You've seen the plan, you've seen pictures of the property. And uh, I think uh, we would open to questions that uh, if I can't answer, I hopefully uh, John and Janet would be able to fill in the fill in the gaps. Okay, I have a question and then I'll get to Fred. Um, I thought Rich said that we had very recently got some uh, nitrogen calculations from VLS. Has Sherry had an opportunity to review them yet? Sherry, have you? Yes, I did review the calculations and each site, even with the, the division of property, each site will have enough for the a, a typical four bedroom, four or five bedroom home. Okay. Because Is the, the, an IA system will be required in the town of Tisbury since it's a new construction. And they'll definitely meet those requirements. Okay. Is it in the uh, Tajmu watershed or does it go into the ocean? Do you know? Tajmu. Okay. I figured that since it's mm -hmm. shouting distance of uh, the of Tajmu. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, and uh, we've talked about traffic. Um, Fred and then Brian. Yes, my, my question, and I'm sure this is something that will come up at the public hearing, is if there is a, an agricultural restriction on the property and or any prohibition against further subdivision. 
Um, Glenn, is the chapter 61, is that the uh, agricultural restriction? Yeah, and I think uh, maybe John can just fill you in on, on uh, you know, what they've done with the Farm Bureau and, and how that's been set up. John, are you there? He's got, he's got to unmute first. That's oh. why Janet's standing there. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah, John. Yeah. So um, I don't know. It, it was late '80s, early '90s that we put the land in Chapter 61A, the uh, agricultural restriction, um, which basically, you know, protected the land from the pressure of development. Uh, and then a few years thereafter, we we worked hard to get the three acre zoning to uh, pass in our neck of the woods, to take some more pressure off. Um, so as far as the question about subdivision in the future, um, who knows the future is forever and who knows what goes on forever. Um, so uh, uh, legally, I guess we could return and and ask for more subdivision but we've kind of done this this whole multi-generational uh plan so that we really don't ever have to come back again and just get it all done and set it up for the future kids and grandchildren and however it all goes so just to be clear you're not proposing any additional restrictions on no further subdivision you're asking for this to be approved uh, as, as you've laid out. And uh, if you needed or you chose to seek a different subdivision or further subdivision, you would obviously come back for a modification. That's your correct. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we have enough for our children. We don't know how many grandchildren we're going to have. So now we're decades down the road and what seem, may, may seem like too many houses now may be very acceptable in the future. So they, they may come back at some point in time, but I don't plan on coming back in my lifetime for any subdivision. <laughs> so I understand. Just for my, uh, so I understand where we are. Um, the land directly to the south, is that Liz's farm? No, that's uh, Sheriff's Meadow. No, I mean, uh, the, the thing that says Oscar Thompson trustee, Oh, that's a, that's my dad's land. That okay. he, put, he put an APR on that. Okay. So that land will never be built on as long as never is. Okay. Never. Um, okay, then Brian and then uh, Ben, go ahead. Yeah, my question uh, was similar to Fred's. I think it's been answered, so I'm good. Okay, Ben. Thanks, Doug. Um, it, this does require a form C uh, approval by the Tiffer Planning Board, so you might want to list that in permits required, Rich. Um, I had a quick question on Northern Pines Road. Do they have a road association? Is there a road association document that you guys could share with us? And then you'll probably want to have a road association document for, um, for your right of way, but though, both of those documents would be helpful. And, okay. and you could you could write it so that the road association document will not for your right of way will not become effective unless you sell a lot outside the family or something like that. But uh, we have to assume, you know, we always think of the worst case scenario, John. So we have to assume that they will be sold, uh, and therefore we have to make sure that everything's in place, even if forever you never do sell and it stays in the family. Okay. One other question, Doug, I had is I, I assume lot eight, the frontage is going to be Northern Pines Road. Yeah. For that, for that, for that one lot. The one on the corner. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Linda. Yes, since we're trying to prepare the applicant for a public <clears throat> hearing, I would like to point out that in a recent, well, still still, I guess, before us, technically, um, DRI, which abuts conservation land that we have asked the applicant to assess 
the, Im the impact upon that conservation land. And I think it would therefore only be fair for this applicant to talk about the impact of the potential building on these sites on the surrounding agricultural protective land and land bank land and Cherish Meadow land, all those. Okay, well, the land bank land is fairly far away. Um, I mean, there's you don't have to tell us now. I think I'm, oh, oh, what I'm really trying to advise you is you should be prepared for the public hearing to answer these questions. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's it's the 50 plus acres of Sheriff's Meadow land that's next to you that you really would probably want to address. Yeah. Um, okay, who's next? Anyone? <clears throat> Christina had her hand up for a second, but she took it down. You want to say something, Christina? Oh, you're muted. No, my 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 concern was addressed. Okay, uh, but I but I maybe edge it a little bit. Uh, does the family um pro propose to keep the sixteen acre lot in sixty one A as farming land and the benefits you get from your taxes? That's, That's great. All of it. Yes, I'm so, sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that yet. <laughs> no, 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 Christina, so, it's a good question. So, in 61A, um, this subdivision. Yeah. If you approved it today, and Tisbury Conservation approved today, it was all approved today. All the lots would stay in 61A oh. until such time as their use changes, um, which is to say. When, when our children go to take a building permit, yeah. then that three acre lot no longer is in 61A, it's now residential. Um, right. So yeah. it's conceivable that some of these lots could be in 61A for 40 years or more until grandchildren yeah. come. So, um, so yeah, the idea is to keep everything in 61A. Um, until such time as, as the use changes. Yeah. And the, the use may well be houses for grandchildren. Yeah. Yes. And, um, so yeah. I, I, does that clear things up? Yeah, it's pretty clear. Um, I think it would be- You may I, need John, to explain I, to the public at large what 61A means. Yes. Okay. Yes, what it means and what it means to your family that you've used it and how you use it now and how you will pr propose to continue using it in the future. Okay, do any of the commissioners need that explanation now? No. I think we get it. Oh. Okay. It's more a matter of uh, addressing the public's uh, ignorance and concerns uh, at a public hearing. You have to assume they know nothing. Uh, and, you know, Especially with with some programs like 61A, it's really a good, you know, public education, spread the word to talk about it at the hearing. Roger that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only thing that I can think of the addition of that we need to cover is that uh, since this is a public hearing and it's a subdivision, we should schedule a site visit before the public hearing. Is the public hearing, what is that, two weeks from now, 18 days? And uh, and, and I'd like- We haven't set the public hearing yet. Haven't? Um, I, I, don't uh, think so. I thought I saw it on for the 18th. We um, have it tentatively uh, scheduled for the 18th. Right. I didn't want to advertise it until we got through this. Mm -hmm. So we okay. could do it on the 18th or we could push it to June 1st. It's kind of up to you guys. John, is there any burning uh, urgency, or can this be? I mean, it's if it's a state planning, you just want to keep the ball rolling because you've got other permits, you've got to go to the planning board and all. Um, right. And we can do it on the 18th as long as we can get the site visit in. Uh, it, or we can do it June 1. At, at whatever is your pleasure works for us. This is a good time of year to visit it. It would be it beautiful. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the last two weeks of May be even better than the first two weeks of May, but oh. leave that to others. Uh, by the last two weeks of May, there'll actually be leaves in the trees where I live. I'm sure they're already yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. Well, well let's yeah. see. Okay, well, you know what? Um, if it doesn't really matter, we uh, staff will be in touch with you. Uh, and as long as we can get the site visit in uh, on a, a decent day and not one like yesterday, um, we can be uh, we can go ahead with either one of those dates. Okay. Very fun. That's it. Uh, we'll see you at the public hearing and the site visit. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank you, much. Guys. Thank you very much. Okay, next. Next is uh, DRI 741. This is the Cirque Meadow subdivision. This is on Division Road. Uh, it's actually, I guess, right across the street from uh, the Meeting House Way, Meeting House Place proposed subdivision. Uh, so, and Doug Hone has this one. Is uh, there? You are, Mr. Hone. Okay. Myself and, and Rob Moriarty's on here with me, and so is the so is the owner, Burke Ross. He's on here too. Okay. Huh? Uh, Can we have a map, please? <laughs> well, let's let Rich do the whole drill, okay? I know. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chairman, hold on just a sec. Okay. DRI 741, Cirque Meadow. Uh, the applicant is ADEC, Meeting House Way, Real Estate, LLC. And that's also the owner. Uh, the location is 35 Division Road in Egertown. The proposal is subdivision of land into two uh, 0.71 acre lots, a 1.46 acre lot, a 1.61 acre lot, a 2.19 acre lot, a 4.55 acre open space parcel, and a 5.58 acre open space parcel for estate purposes. The zoning in Egertown is R20, which is a half acre minimum lot size. Um, the project summary is, is no different than what I just articulated. <clears throat> it's uh, the trigger is uh, 2.3B. It's a mandatory referral and MVC review. It was referred by the Egertown Planning Board. Uh, there is the location of the lot. This is Meeting House Way. This is uh, Division Road right here. This is the, um, sorry for the cutoff, the uh, proposed subdivision. Open space 5.58 acres, open space 5.4.55 acres, uh, lot one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, there is a um, trail easement over here on Old Machacket. This is a shot of the uh, the the, the the property is is vacant land. It's it it's it's meadow and woodland. Uh, there's nothing else out there. Uh, this is a shot from the edge of the property where uh, two houses are being erected. Um, and this is sort of another shot a little further in. Um, the um, the two property owners have agreed to generate a um, vegetative buffer between uh, the proposed subdivision site and uh, where these two houses are being built. And that's sort of an image of what that looks like. Um, this is a shot into uh, the subdivision site from the edge of it, uh, where there's some brush and woodland, another shot. There's a few clumps of uh, trees here and there in the subdivision uh, site, um, but by and large, it's largely um, uh, grass meadow. And uh, this is a shot of uh, Division Road, which is, um, there's no that I could see um, curb cut yet. 
uh, to access the lot, or at least not very easily. Easily, it's surrounded by a uh, a wire fence, but uh, not one that you can uh, readily see from Division Road. Rich, Pretty... I'm, I'm confused. When you say the lot, you said that there are two houses under construction on this site. Where are they? No, no. Uh, uh, my apologies. There are two high houses un under construction on an adjacent parcel that is not owned by this applicant, and that's what that. Um, and they are they are on uh, what to the the north uh, the northeast is that what they are? They are. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. I figured that. Okay, because the rest is Island Grove and Meeting House and uh, Meeting House Road and Division Road. Okay. All right, I understand. Um, uh, very similar to uh, the previous project uh, presented um, uh, the broad, in broad terms, the planning concerns are affordable housing, wastewater, uh, habitat and environment, and uh, traffic and transportation. Um, as far as affordable housing uh, is concerned, um, some sort of uh, um, written documentation to uh, to uh, formalize that it's a state plan uh, would be necessary. And then uh, should um, one of the lots uh, be sold uh, outside of the family, um, it's the opinion of our uh, housing subject matter expert that um, some sort of affordable housing mitigation would need to be applied mm -hmm. in that instance. Is this, is this a family subdivision? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Doug, okay. Go on, Rich. I'm sorry. Um, as far as uh, wastewater is concerned, um, nitrogen calculations were done. However, it should be noted that they are not going to use uh, on-site waste systems, septic tanks. They're going to connect to um, the Eggertown uh, wastewater system. Uh, nonetheless, uh, based on the, uh, the the calculations that were done by uh, uh, Mr. Hone, uh, they are within the parameters. Um, set by uh, the Eggertown Wastewater Department. Um, it should be noted also that they, uh, even though this isn't, this is connected to wastewater, they will be not connecting to the town water system. They will be utilizing on-site wells. Uh, as far as uh, habitat and environment is concerned, um, there is some exceptional open space uh, as GSI mapping. Uh, shows um, and that all that very closely mirrors <clears throat> the um, designated open space they've created in the subdivision, uh, and uh, with very little overlap. Uh, as far as uh, traffic and transportation is concerned, um, uh, the, uh, the 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 access and staging of fire apparatus. Uh, could be of concern, um, and uh, the best of my understanding, um, the uh, applicant's agent was going to have a uh, was going to confer with the fire department on that subject. Um, and uh, Division Road is a private road, so it's a private road leading to a, uh, a private easement. So, as long as everything is uh, of the appropriate width and fire apparatus can uh, stage and turn around, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, the traffic planner has the same um, same respect to this one that it's not, doesn't think a traffic study is required. And that's it in a nutshell, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, Doug Hunt, I have a couple of questions. You've got two curb cuts on this, am I reading this right? One goes to lot five and the other one serves uh, the other, more yes. lots, right? Yep. All right. And um, where do you stand with the Wastewater Commission? Have you applied? I, I've, I've been to them. Um, well, this was this, this piece of land was uh, included with a couple other pieces of land right in this general area, the Meeting House subdivision, the property to the northeast and stuff. When, uh, when Wastewater allocated a bunch of tie-ins back in... 2013, whenever it was, mm -hmm. uh, I, and then some of them have been, well, none of them have been used up except for the five lots that are immediately to the northeast. Uh, I went back to them uh, and and met with uh, Bill Burke 
and Joe Rock, just to confirm that uh, we're still on and we still have the tie-ins here. And they said that we are, we, uh, I've requested it. He, they said I should just make sure that the wastewater commissioners themselves understand what's going on. And I've requested a, to get on their agenda. I am not on their agenda yet. But uh, as part of the arrangement out here, the town sewer was run right to the corner of what we're calling Cirque Meadow Way at Division Road. So town sewer goes right to the property corner and is available to be tied into. And the, and the number of connections is are available. Did you say 11 connections are allocated to this 17 acres? Uh, no, there uh, it, it was a total of, I think it was a total of, 50 for all of these pieces. This, this, these were all owned by Dickie Brown at one point in time. Yeah. On yeah. both sides of Division Road. And when in early teens, 2000, you know, 10, 11, whatever it was, maybe even before that, when, when Dickie started putting these things on the market, um, Dick Barbini, actually, from my, my former partner, went to the wastewater department to make to make sure that there were we there would be town sewer available since. The proximity to the pond, the you know the what, the nitrogen calculations would be very difficult if we didn't tie to town sewer. So back during those days, they allocated I think it was fifty tie-ins to Dickie Brown's properties on both sides of Division Road. Meeting House Place was mm -hmm. going to use some of them. Um, the five lots that are adjacent to this property are using five of them, and that left I think I forget the exact number, but it left something like maybe eleven. It might it's right around there left over. We're only be using five and. We're not going to be using any more than five. Okay, uh, which raises the next question, and then I'll get to uh, to Linda. You've got two uh, open space lots uh, totaling over ten acres, which would be uh, an important potential benefit of this subdivision. Are they going to be in any way restricted? Yes. So, uh, uh, Rich cut the bottom corner of the of the plan off. Where I have some notes. But uh, those total, the two open space lots total 10.13 acres, which is about 59, it's 59% of the total acreage of the property, not counting areas outside the development envelopes, which will not be buildable either. Yep. Uh, and, and the one open space lot, open space lot B is the meadow. And we're definitely, we're definitely uh, Rob's going to put together covenants and restrictions, and they'll, they'll be in our offers that we are going to be getting, we'll get to you before the hearing. Uh, and that meadow will be always maintained as a meadow and the open space area, the 200 foot wide open space area A along Meeting House Way will just be left as a forested area. We tried to keep the driveway to lot five um, along basically along the, the edge of the meadow uh, and, and the edge of the 200 foot open space lot A. So they we will have covenants and restrictions and we'll give them to you that show that they'll be protected. So they won't be further subdivided and they won't be built on? No further subdivision. Okay. And they won't be built on? And and they will not be built on. Okay. That would be great. And uh, you, we will need them before we close the public hearing so that we can yep. uh, look at them. Yeah, we didn't put together any offers. I know we always put together offers and we didn't, you know, Rob started them and I said, well, let's just hold off until we go to yep. LUPC see what comes up so we make sure we don't miss anything. And after this meeting, we will sure. endeavor to put together the list. Yeah, road association, uh, yep. you know, agreement, all that stuff. Okay, I think Linda was first and then uh, Christine uh -huh. and Ben. Go yeah, ahead. I just, we, we discussed the point of the issue of um, emergency access. And I just wanted to remind everyone, especially Doug, but I'm sure he does remember, that we expect a formal agreement with the fire department that the access is, you know, but what the access is and Wait, that it is I, adequate. I'm meeting with the Yeagertown Assistant Fire Chief Josh Baker on the site tomorrow. I've already. I, I know you would know, but I just, <laughs> I'm not sure all the commissioners know. <laughs> we have two ideas. One would be to come up the, the subdivision road for the four lots, which is Cirque Meadow Way, and, and then somehow provide an access over to four and five. But the other thing that we're probably going to end up doing, depending upon tomorrow's conversation, would be to allow the fire department to come up the driveway to lot five and then branch off and give them a, a like an emergency access easement along the edge of the meadow edge of those lots. 
so they can get to each one of those lots from the back if they need to. Hopefully they never need to. But I just wanted to remember, remind my fellow commissioners, and I know you don't need the reminder, but that that should be part of the plan that we approve formally. They should know by tomorrow how they want me to how they, how they want us to do it. Yeah. Okay, Christina. Um, yeah, uh, Linda and and to other commissioners who haven't sat on planning boards, um, those the questions about the roads and the widths and the surface and the fire engines and stuff are always addressed by planning boards when there's a subdivision that they're asked to approve. Um, not, not that we need to, to duck it, but we certainly don't need to, um, you know, we don't, we don't need to worry. We have boards. always required formal. What's that? We have always required formal agreements with the fire department about access as part of our process. I'm sure that the town cares too. I'm just saying if we want to be even handed with all our applicants, that that's something we have always required. And we'll get you that. And plan board will, the plan board will care and we'll get, get both the plan board and the commission that, that yeah, information. Yeah. yeah, in the interest of sort of working with planning boards, some and other town boards. Yeah, um, thank you, I'm done. Okay, I'm sure the planning board chair is taking note of this. Yeah, yeah. Ben? Thanks, Doug. Um, other Doug, how do you anticipate getting the sewer to lot five? Would you have an easement that crosses some of the other properties or would you go keep going down Division Road and then up the driveway? Down Division Road and up the driveway. Okay. Thanks. So I, the, the sewer comes in Meeting House and down, down Division Road? No, the other way. It comes down. It comes from Meshacket Road, down oh, Division gosh. Road, and it stops at, at the beginning of our property. So you'd have to run it down to uh, down Division Road to the driveway to Lot 5. Right. We, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me, let me rephrase that. We, we, that's one way to do it. The, the sewer department will let you actually create easements across private lots the water department won't which is why yeah why we're doing not doing town water but the sewer department in Egertown the waste I'm sorry the wastewater department in Egertown will let you run um easements across private lots so Good. I, I, let me take back what I said Ben I think yeah I think, that's what I was wondering <laughs> I think our discussion with them was that we would run it up uh, Cirque Meadow Way and probably along the property line between lot two and three and then run around the lower part of lot three to lot four and the lower part of lot four to lot five. That's that's what we discussed with the wastewater department. It would be uh, a lot cheaper, that's for sure. I, I take back what I said before, sorry. Thanks, Doug, and Doug. Um, okay, Christina, oh, no, your, hand, your hand is down. Uh, yep. Anyone else have questions? Okay, one thing we have to do is vote on waiving a traffic study. Mr. Fred, can you make the usual motion? Yes, I would move that we do not require a traffic study for this project. Second. Any discussion? Can't imagine there is. All in favor, um, kind of raise your uh, hand. Uh, I don't uh, see. Oh, wait, Christina, do you have discussion? Yeah, um, a question. Does, does Division Road, will Division Road serve as a continuous open at Meeting House Road and then open at the other end, otherwise known as a through road? Oh yes, there's other people. I mean, other people have the rights to use Division Road, so they right. it has to stay open. Um, I think a an in-house that is in MVC house uh, traffic comments about that would be useful at the public hearing. It might save a lot of questions. I would be disappointed if we don't get that automatically. Oh, okay. Me too. Certainly should, yeah, our, our traffic planner certainly should do that yeah. as part of uh, staff review. What we're, all we're voting on now is uh, whether we yeah. need a traffic study, an independent traffic study at the expense no. of the applicant. I agree. We, we okay. do not need one. Let's, our, own, our own knowledge. <laughs> let's um, vote. Uh, there so may also be questions at the. Uh, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we made that. Okay. Uh, hey, Doug, can I, Mr. Chairman, can I just add one more comment that I didn't add before, if you don't mind? Go ahead. Uh, I just want to fill in some blanks here um, briefly. You might wonder why the project is, why, why that we call this Cirque Meadow. Uh, as I mentioned, Burke Ross is the person who purchased this property 15 years ago, put it in a trust for his children, uh, and his wife's name is Susan. So they've done this before on other things they've been involved in. Sue and Burke ends up being Cirque. So that's what that's that's where that came from. And then ADEC is also, uh, A-D-E-C, is the first letter of each of his four kids' children's names. So that's where that came from. And the intention here is for those lots one through four to be reserved for, there's, there's a trust that owns these properties and the beneficiary is the children. So the um, intent is to have lots one through four available for his children for some day when they, want, when they might want to build. And potentially in the shorter term, uh, Burke and his wife, Susan, build a house on lot five. So lot five is, that's why lot five is separate from the first four lots. The, the, you know, the, the road for the first four lots can be, can be held off and not built on yet and things like that. So that's, that it's, it's, it's definitely a family subdivision. And uh, that's the reasoning behind the, the names and nomenclature, et, et cetera. Okay. So that as long as it's held in the family and if uh, any of the subdivided lots are used by family members, you're fine in terms of an affordable housing contribution. But we would probably want, if, if, if one is appropriate, and I always have to go look at the policy to figure out whether this one is triggered, we would probably condition it that if you sell outside the family, then you would have to address that issue at that time, but not before. I think that's how the policy works. I, I think so. Decided by the policy. Does that sound right? Sounds right to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and as far as uh, understanding of the names, uh, your explanation reminds me of a three lot subdivision off of Winya that was is named Chap Delane, which apparently <laughs> uh, is named after Harold. It was Harold's subdivision, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, ben. Yeah, um, uh, just thinking through that last comment, if lot five is developed before you build the road, um, lot five wouldn't want to be part of the Form C subdivision. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to release that lot until the road is constructed. I mean, I'm right. sure you've thought through that. Yeah, I, I will probably, this, this is a plan that shows you everything that's going on there. And when I go to the planning board tomorrow night, I'm going to talk to them in terms of when we finally bring a plan in for them to sign, that we bring in two plans. One would be the Form C for lots one through four, and one would be a separate A and R plan for lot five. Once the commission's approved everything, and and make sure the planning board you know, agrees with that. I'll Got it. Tomorrow night. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. How much frontage do you need for that lot five A and R? Must be what you've got. 50. 50. 50. 50 in Agertown. Yeah, that's that, why that's it flares. Cool. That's why it flares. Yep. You should have known. Okay. Anything else by commissioners? Okay, otherwise, uh, let's let's schedule a site visit. Are you in a big hurry, Mr. Hone? Um, we, you know, I'd like to keep it moving, but uh, okay. there... well, we'll see if we can get a you know a good weather day between now and either uh, the 18th or the first. Okay. So just give me a couple of days heads up, and I'll make sure we stake all the property corners that are along the meadow, which is the best way to view this, and okay. uh, we'll have it ready. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we have completed our work for the evening. I told my wife we weren't going to be done until 7.30, and I'm um, very <laughs> grateful that I'm completely <laughs> Yes, Linda? I'm raising my hand about a rather different matter, which has to do with the resumption of in-person meetings at the commission. Yep. Um, I'm a little hesitant about driving at night, especially in bad weather. So I'm going to give you a ride. Are you? Do you drive down? If you, if you need a ride, I will bring you. Okay. okay. Well, I, <laughs> what I mean, need more Thank than you, anything Doug. else is a ride home, because Don is willing oh, yeah. to bring me to the commission. But if you drive down State Road oh, past sure. the end of my road, let's make arrangements for me to park at the end of my road, and you can schlep me the rest of the way. Thank you. I think I know where you live. 
I think you do too. If Don can, if Don gets you there, or that even that's even better. Yeah, Since no, I I plan to park at the end of the road. I'll talk to you. Okay, good. You don't have to worry. I'll get you home. Thank you. Okay, we are now done. We have really t and we took care of the really important business. Yeah. See everybody Thursday. Study up, okay? We got a lot of work to do Thursday. And Mr. Bryan is going to be chairing us. He is. He's okay. ready. The meeting is adjourned.